Hello, my name is Bo Simonson, and I am the Technical Product Manager for Blackfire IEO. In this session, you will get a high-level overview of what Blackfire is and how it can help your developers build faster applications for your business. If your web apps aren't fast enough, you're losing both customers and revenue. That's why performance optimization is key to success. So how do you know if your application is running as fast as it can? How do you know that you are making newer versions of your app faster than older versions and not slower? For most development teams, the answer is you can't. That's because developers today do not have the right tools. Blackfire was originally created by Sensio Labs, the creator of the Symfony PHP framework. Sensio Labs has been developing web applications for many years now, and that's one thing they've learned over that time is solving issues in production costs a lot more than solving them in development. And the main reasons for this are because it takes more time to have a fix. Um, it takes more uh, team members to actually get in the, um, in the process. Um, if you have found a bug in production, chances are a tester has found it in production, um, which means writing a bug. It means going through the backlog. It means the developer picking it up later and starting the whole process over again. Um, if it's in production, it also uh, potentially directly impacts your customers and therefore your business. If a customer has found a problem, uh, you may have lost that customer. So all of these things add up to making it uh, very important to find as many issues as possible in development. Blackfire empowers teams to continuously verify and improve an application's performance. All the way from development to production, um, Blackfire allows you to make sure that no performance flaw will actually hit your users. And if you do find a problem where there's a performance issue, um, Blackfire lets you quickly determine what the problem is and help you find a fix. <clears throat> Blackfire is designed to be used in the entire lifecycle of an application, all the way from development to production. Um, we definitely recommend people put um, Blackfire in production because there are a lot of types of uh, problems that happen in production that aren't easy to detect um, in development. Uh, so having Blackfire already available for the developers to use once a problem shows up in production saves a lot of time um, and has less impact on the overall application. <clears throat> Blackfire's core technology is a profiler. Uh, if you've ever used tools such as XHProf or XDebug, you're probably familiar with what a profiler is. Blackfire designed its own proprietary profiler for a couple of reasons, including the fact that we wanted to have the um, most accurate measurements possible. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the profiler was reliable, and we wanted to make sure that it was safe to put into production. Um, some of these tools that uh, were mentioned earlier are maybe not necessarily um, safe to have in production. Uh, we wanted to make sure that Blackfire was very um, safe to be deployed into production. <coughs> When you're looking at performance management, um, you'll probably come across the acronym APM. Uh, APM can stand for Application Performance Management. Uh, this acronym applies to a lot of different solutions. Uh, the difference between some of them, like Fastly and Blackfire, might be uh, more obvious. Uh, Fastly, in this case, is a CDN. Um, it helps ensure that less requests hit the actual application and are just served from cache. Uh, sometimes we get questions um, of how we differentiate from some of the others, like New Relic. Uh, New Relic essentially monitors real user interactions with the website. Uh, it collects the data for each request, like the time it takes PHP to generate a response, SQL queries, HTTP calls, and also some information about browser-side rendering. Uh, Blackfire, on the other hand, does not actually monitor web applications. Its core technology is root rooted in the profiler. Uh, Blackfire never instruments real user requests. Instead, authorized users are responsible for triggering Blackfire to manually create a, pro a profile when a performance issue is detected. Uh, Blackfire can also be run automatically on a predefined schedule or in, a, in response to specific events like when a new version is deployed to production. <clears throat> Blackfire is useful throughout the application development lifecycle, not just in production. Uh, we showed the, the graph earlier where Blackfire is definitely intended to be used both in development, staging, and in production. Um, using Blackfire, uh, developers can continuously measure and improve application performance. 
Um, the best uh, the best tools like uh, New Relic can do is alert you when your production site is slow, uh, which in some cases is going to be too late. Uh, by integrating Blackfire into your development workflow, you're helping developers understand why their code is slowing down earlier in the process before these issues reach production. Um, and then finally, Blackfire gives developers the right information at the right moment. Uh, so if you're in development, you get that information. If you're testing something in staging, you get the information. And if you find that something has made its way to production, Blackfire can give you that information at that point as well. <clears throat> Ultimately, uh, a profiler's job is to help you measure performance. Um, and the goal is to be able to optimize that performance. Um, the reality is that very few developers actually have the tools to measure their code performance very well. <clears throat> And that's where Blackfire uh, comes in. Blackfire provides tools to, to <clears throat> uh, measure resource consumption um, at a function level. And resource consumption is really where uh, performance uh, has an impact. Um, we're able to look at several dimensions, including wall time, uh, which is the total time spent if you were actually looking at a clock on the wall. Um, that time is actually broken down into two components. Um, I.O. time, which is the amount of time that the application is not actually doing any work and it's waiting for some sort of input or output. Um, this could be anything from waiting for disk access to read in a file um, to a Redis, um, Redis command waiting for information to be sent or set or um, returned. Could also be things like SQL queries or um, inter interacting with other third party applications. <clears throat> The other component of wall time is CPU time, and this is the, the time actually spent by the application doing work. Um, so overall, when you're talking about time in terms of performance, generally wall time is, is sort of the thing that you will feel and what your customers and users will feel, uh, but it's actually broken down into two components, and being able to see that breakdown can sometimes be quite useful. Um, Blackfire can also measure memory consumption, um, the amount of network traffic being generated by the requests. Um, uh, we can also explore the HTTP queries that might be generated by your backend code. So if you're integrating with a third-party API, um, you would be able to see the HTTP requests individually that are being made um, and be able to get some more detail on the information um, that's being transferred, like the amount of time and the amount of network traffic that was done. And then we also list the SQL queries that are executed within a page to give you a better idea of the, um, the number of SQL queries and how long those are actually taking to process. <clears throat> when you're looking at a profile, you can browse through um, the dimensions that we've listed using two types of visualizations, call graphs and timelines. Um, the call graph uh, makes a uh, provides the, uh, a way to dig through the caller and callee relationships. So this would be the, the graph on, on the top. Um, it lets you look to see the number of times certain functions are called and by who, uh, like, like who called that function, and then the number of times that those functions called other functions. Uh, we also do some other nice things on the graph to sort of help you better understand those relationships and focus on the things that are more important. Um, the Timeline graph is the graph on the bottom here. Um, this graph actually helps you uh, look at uh, when individual functions happen um, across a time span. Uh, so this is more like a flame graph style representation where you can look to see uh, which specific functions happen at which specific time. Um, so it's a, it's a different view of the same data and these two visualizations are very complementary. The two can actually work together quite nicely. <clears throat> One of the best ways to ensure you have good code um, is to test the code. And the same is uh, true for performance. Um, good code starts, um, very good performance starts with good code. And this is where Blackfire adds value to uh, developers' workflow. Blackfire has the ability to create tests using a rich expression language that allows developers to express any kind of assertions. Uh, tests can be used for defining a project's performance thresholds. Uh, testing the code's behavior, and ensuring that there are no performance regressions. Tests are based on metrics. Um, these are things like number of calls to a specific set of functions. Um, developers can use Blackfire's built-in metrics for a wide variety of supported libraries 
by frameworks such as Symfony, Laravel, Magento, Drupal, Easy Platform, Typo 3, or WordPress. Um, they can also create their own metrics based on their code and their business logic. Writing tests is a great way to focus on unwanted or unexpected code behavior. Uh, testing should be managed as, uh, sorry, testing should be automated as much as possible so the developers can focus on features that add value to your application. Blackfire also enables you to automate testing in every environment from development to production. So if you're using tools like Jenkins or Travis, uh, you'll be able to add Blackfire test to your continuous integration workflows um, out of the box. Um, it's also possible to uh, give feedback on the results uh, to uh, tools like Quanta, Logmatic, and other tools via webhook. Um, the, uh, the good examples here would be something like GitHub, where if you have a PR and integrate with GitHub, um, you'd be able to run the tests on the code for that PR and have the PR be notified whether or not there's a performance regression. Uh, so that's something that um, can be quite helpful to make sure that bugs really do not go from um, development even into staging. Uh, performance management expertise cannot be gained overnight. Uh, writing relevant and efficient performance tests may require some learning and the support of, um, and this support of some experts within that domain. Uh, this is exactly why we built the performance recommendations. Uh, Blackfire performance recommendations are the default performance tests. They're built into Blackfire and they are run on code anytime you profile your application. Uh, the recommendations are fully documented to help developers understand why such best practices exist, how to fix the issue, and includes links to external resources um, to provide additional um, backing for, for why we're making this recommendation. Uh, plus, there's a code snippet at the end of the doc uh, to make it easy to copy and paste the test into your own Blackfire YAML file to extend the test. <laughs> um, this is a good way to create your first regression test um, so that as soon as you fix the problem, um, you'll be able to have these tests that are passing. <clears throat> With no configuration needed, Blackfire will detect the framework you're using. Uh, recommendations will be shown both according to your framework and to the environment in which the code is deployed. Uh, so we're able to detect um, whether you're in a production or development environment. Um, all these recommendations have been carefully crafted by uh, PHP experts or in collaboration with experts on each framework. Um, so I'm gonna jump real quick into a uh, quick demo to show you Blackfire in action. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I will answer them as, um, as I'm able. So um, what, what I have on the screen here is a um, application that we found online. Um, it's uh, an application called GitList and it is a PHP-driven um, Git repository browser. So if we look here, we can see that there is <coughs> um, a, a standard layout that you would see on something like GitHub. Um, it allows you to browse the repository. You're able to see things like tags and branches. Um, you can look at the commits to see who made the commits, um, and then actually look at the commit and see all of the information. Uh, the way that this works is it is a Silex application, uh, which uh, Silex is a micro framework based on uh, Symfony. It uses Twig for templating and it uses a library called Gitter that uses the Symfony process component to drive the Git binary. So it's actually making calls out to uh, the Git command line. Um, and the easiest way to get running with Blackfire is to install the uh, Blackfire companion. Um, the Blackfire Companion is a Chrome extension or a Firefox extension. Uh, we have both available. And what it does is it will trigger a build or trigger a profile on the URL in the URL bar. So what we're gonna do is click this now. Um, it also has a couple of other options. We're just gonna leave everything on by default for this quick demo. So I'm gonna click profile and we'll be able to see the progress that it's making. Now the default behavior is that Blackfire is going to make 10 requests and then average those. So the usual way that Blackfire works is you're not actually looking at a profile of a single request, you're looking at an average of 10 requests. 
Uh, so across the top, right away, we can see some high level information. We can see that the, the wall time was 179 milliseconds. Uh, we can see the IO wait time was 74.5 and the CPU time was 104. So if we add these values up, we end up with close to 179 milliseconds. Uh, we can also see the memory consumption um, and we see that there was no network consumption. So this, this request itself does no uh, communication with the network. Um, we see that there were no HTTP requests and no SQL queries made. So I'm gonna jump into our call graph first. And the call graph is presented with two, two main features. There's the function list on the left and there's the call graph on the right. Um, and the first thing I'd like to point out is that we don't actually show every single call on the call graph. Um, and we do that to try and focus people's attention on the places where there's actually significant resource consumption. Um, there's going to be a lot of calls in here that are not going to be important at all to your application's performance. Um, so we, we want to try and focus things on the things that are actually important. Um, we can see that the boxes are actually shaded differently. We can see that these two boxes on the bottom are filled in. Um, and if, as I mouse over them, you can see on the function list on the left, uh, those two functions get highlighted. So this dark filled in box is the thing on the top. So this is the, high, this is the heaviest resource consumer for this dimension, which is uh, uh, the wall time. Um, and the, the lighter pink box is the second item. Uh, we can also see that these boxes are outlined, or these boxes are outlined versus these other boxes that aren't really outlined. Uh, th these boxes that are outlined represent the critical path to um, where these big resource consumers are happening. So although um, if I click on this, I'll click on this function here and see what we have. So we see 95 calls to auto load include file, um, 10.3 milliseconds, so it's not actually consuming a lot of resources, but it does consume enough resources that um, it's being displayed. So it's using 5.78% of the, the, the total time. So we're showing this, um, but it's not highlighted because it's not a part of anything that leads directly to uh, the thing that's consuming 32% of the time. So we show the things that could potentially be issues um, to sort of uh, focus your developers on uh, where the, um, the big things are that are taking time within the application. Um, clicking on these functions, as you can see, it actually expands to show you more details about that function. So if I look at stream select here, um, we can see that almost all of the time is actually IO wait time. So we can see that 76% of the IO wait time is actually spent on stream select. This actually makes sense. Um, stream select is waiting for um, a stream to respond. In this case, it's waiting for the get binary to respond. So that makes, makes sense, so that's what we're waiting for. Um, if we look at something like process start, things are a little more interesting here. We can see the difference between the exclusive time uh, is the time that this function is actually spent processing uh, versus the inclusive time. Um, here we can see that this function start actually called three different functions. Um, it called proc open, it called update status, and then this little tiny one um, is, is running. And then the rest of the time is the, the amount of work that this function was doing itself. So that's the cost induced by the function itself. So you're able to explore the relationship between the functions um, and how they, they work uh, using the call graph view. Um, if we go now to one of the other dimensions, uh, we can switch now to IO wait. Um, and here we see that the stream select function is still the highest, but now we have something else. We have proc get status as the second item. And it's not using enough resources to uh, get the, the shading on it. Um, for every one of these dimensions, we're gonna see the call graph change drastically, um, sometimes more drastically than others. And the reason is that um, no one function is usually going to be the thing that takes um, both the total amount of IO weight and the total amount of CPU time. So the, the focus for these different functions is going to change, so the graph changes. Um, this is why it's useful to look at these different dimensions because the total time gives you one picture of the performance of your application, but being able to look at the different dimensions shows you uh, different ways you can potentially 
um, look at the performance of your app. Uh, we also have memory. Uh, memory is the same sort of tool, except now instead of a time for the dimension, we're looking at memory consumption. So we can see which functions are using or um, creating memory. Um, network is going to be the same kind of graph, but there is no network traffic on this one. Um, HTTP request views, um, this will list the URL, the number of times that URL was called, the total time waiting for it to respond, and the amount of network traffic. So you could use this to uh, keep tabs on like API providers to make sure that they're responding in, in whatever SLA they've guaranteed. If they said that requests will be responded within one second, you'd be able to see pretty quickly if there were five calls and it took 20 seconds that that's not true. Um, and then you would know that this is probably why you're way to be able to look at the, the health of any APIs you're interacting with. Um, and then SQL queries, similarly, uh, we can see the SQL query that's generated, um, the number of calls, and then the amount of time waiting uh, for those SQLs uh, to respond. The last view that we have is the timeline view. And this shows the same sort of information, um, or it actually is the same information, but it's presented in a different way. Um, here we can see uh, some of the metrics being called out um, with colors, and that helps us better understand the, the life cycle of the application. Uh, for example, I can see that this big orange bit here is the tree controller. Um, so this represents the entire time that the business logic of my application is running. Um, and then we can see that it shifts to the view layer, which is um, uh, this twig display, this purple bit here. So we can look at this and, and use this to determine how our application is working um, versus the framework. Um, here we can see that this must all be framework bootstrap code, so we can get a better idea of um, how, how our framework is configured. If it's mostly framework and just a little tiny bit, uh, that either means that this code in the business layer is really fast, or maybe it means that we need to do some more work to optimize the, the framework itself so that the framework isn't taking up the bulk of the resources. So this is the timeline view. Um, this can be useful for uh, determining patterns or seeing um, where memory starts leaking. Here we can see this background blue uh, represents memory, so we can sort of see a little shelf here. Um, this could be a good way to help find memory leaks um, if the amount of memory increases um, in weird ways that you weren't expecting. This can be um, a good way to help find that. Um, that wouldn't necessarily be as obvious even on the memory graph. So if we go back to the, the call graph for memory, we might not be able to see that as well here. We'd see that something was consuming a lot of memory, but we might not know why or at which point it was in the code. <clears throat> so these are the main two um, ways that people interact with Blackfire profiles. Uh, one last thing I would like to show on the demo is a uh, fix. So what we did was we um, looked at the code, um, looked at the code after we did some work on the profile itself um, and isolated a part of the code that was being duplicated multiple times that wasn't needing, uh, that maybe wasn't needing to be. So what we did was we did a performance fix um, and deployed that code. Now we're gonna profile this code and see how it behaves. And if we look here, originally we had 179 milliseconds and almost 75 milliseconds of IO weight. The new version of the code runs in 146 milliseconds and only 52 milliseconds of IO weight. So we're gonna jump into the call graph just real quick to take a look at what we see. Um, originally, stream select was called 79 times, prop open 20. So these were the two heavy items on the list before. And if we look at the new code, we see stream select is only called 44 times, so almost half as many times and proc open has actually dropped down to 11. So we can look at this and say, yay, we've, we've made some performance improvements. We know what we've actually done. Uh, but one of the other uh, nice features of Blackfire is we have the comparison tool um, that lets us do something like a, a git diff. I'm gonna compare the version that we did at the beginning of the session, or 10 minutes ago, to the one that we're looking at now with the performance fix in it. And now it's actually gonna highlight for us to actual differences. So what we can do now is visually see where something has been made better. So we can see here, git list client 
uh, we save 57 calls here, or 57 milliseconds of calls here, and 44 milliseconds of calls on this path. And then we can see stream select where we've saved 15 milliseconds of time. So this gives you a really good idea of the actual work that you've done to improve performance um, that lets the team uh, working on it know that, yes, I made a performance improvement here. Uh, we also highlight when performance decreases. So here we can see, uh, this is kind of a confusing example, but we can see here that uh, we do show when things get slower. Uh, so perhaps you've saved 15 milliseconds here, uh, but you added 10 milliseconds somewhere else. Uh, we would actually be able to look at that here and show you that, um, uh, yeah, you improved performance, but you also impacted performance negatively somewhere else. Um, and you might not be able to even know that you've done that without a tool like Blackfire to show you um, the changes that you're making. All right, so um, I know we're running short on time here. So um, if you want to have a developer take a look at this in more detail, the best way is to have them um, try Blackfire themselves. Um, they can create a free hack edition um, of Blackfire, uh, but I would recommend they try a premium edition for free for 15 days uh, to get full access to the profiler tool. Um, we also have an online book called PHP Code for Performance Explained uh, that walks through um, an example in pretty deep detail uh, to show the developers how to actually use Blackfire, how to get it set up and installed, how to read a profile, and then how to um, go about finding a performance fix for those problems. Uh, we also have um, other webinars. Uh, we have Getting Started with Blackfire webinar uh, that will be, I think next week we have those. Um, if you're interested in having a, uh, having a developer look at this in more detail, we'll go through this example that we did today um, in a lot more detail. And then we also have a uh, auto automation uh, webinar as well to talk about how to automate testing for Blackfire. Thank you for joining. Uh, feel free to come back for any of the other webinars and check our blog for updates on features. Thank you.